Oh, fantastic. I can hear you and see you. Can you hear and see me? Okay. Yes. Okay, right. Um, I'm presuming I'm working with the same people as yesterday. Is that right? Yes. Could you say that again and sound a little bit more enthusiastic? Yes. Oh, that's better. Okay. So, does uh, one of the two people who didn't speak up yesterday, does anybody want to share with me their story idea so far, just so we can get a vague idea of what sort of thing we're, we're writing with? Right, if it's uh, Ben, whoever you are, where's Ben? Put your hand up, Ben. Right, if you're embarrassed about sharing your story idea with the rest of the group, is it possible that it's not the best story idea for you to be writing about? Maybe. Maybe. What is your story idea? Well, there's loads of flowers from the graveyard, and they like, like, go and like, contagious their disease to all the other flowers, and then they have to go and bring everyone back from the dead. It could be one of the most exciting stories that's ever been written. You never know until you write it. I had a workshop like this in a school recently, where one of the boys in the class decided to set his entire story inside a human body. And the characters were germs versus blood cells. I want you to have a look in newspapers and magazines and online for photos of ordinary people, not famous people that you know, but ordinary people that may look similar to your characters. And if you can print them off or cut them out, that's a good idea, because having an image in your head of what that character looks like is always good when you're writing. I sometimes find pictures online of just normal people in Google image search that look like my characters or how I imagine them to look like and I pin them up on my office wall so that I can look, almost look at that character when I'm writing about them.